Hi guys, I'm Maria Meliora and I welcome you to my channel. Today is a very special day. For me it is almost like Christmas because I finally, finally got my last package and accumulated all of the fragrances that I managed to put my hands on from a historic it's not as historic actually <laughs> it's more in the name than in the history but it's an amazing niche brand that I was kind of like having an unrequited crush on <laughs> it's a histoire de parfums I really love the concepts I like how they build their collections I if you watched any of my videos you know that I have a soft spot like my my little heart just like flutters every time somebody mentions books, opera, culture, aristocracy, intellect. This is just, this is like sex to me, like, whoo, whoo, what did you say? Opera, oh, experimental theater, like, I just like, oh my god, who is it hot in here? I don't know why, I think I'm that kind of like bookworm that every time people have a way with blending words with highbrow culture, I just, I just, I get, I, I get like hot flashes all over me. So this is that kind of brand. They have collections that are devoted to different historic, um, you know, thought leaders, to um, all different operas, to that matter, to all kinds of forms of history, architecture, culture, music, and all of that deliciously blended and wrapped into the forms of what? Books! Their perfumes look like books that you can put on your shelf. I'm loving it. I'm in love with the concept. And I was really nervous about getting to actually smell some of the fragrances because I was in horror like what if they don't live up to the promise of what it could be. So I got myself in different places here and there, any, anywhere I could put my hands on a few samples or uh, on a few different bottles and I just want to show you what I got. Um, just an honorable mentions, I tried a little sample of Matahari. I think I tried their chocolate one from Sandbird. Actually Sandbird has a number of those you can try. I also got Amber 114 from them which I'm gonna review later when I talk to my favorite Amber perfumes and rank them from most to least favorite. I, I What else did I try? I tried Jules Verne. I tried... I think that's it. So most of these are blind purchases. And we'll start from the top. Uh, this one is 1904. This is the collection. Oh, if I can find. They usually come with a little insert. Okay, I think I just lost mine. That tells us. Okay, I need to pull it from a different one so I can read you the notes. So all of them come with these kind of inserts that explain the concept of the collection, explain the notes, kind of give you a little bit more of a the the room kind of like more intro into like the dream world of what they really want you to feel and think of when you smell the juice so all right 1904 this is an opera collection and this is devoted to madame butterfly like even the names make me feel like oh. <laughs> okay that is let's spray it and I'll read you the notes and tell you what I think of it so far. Oh, let me tell you. The packaging, right? The packaging. Little books. You open them up. The perfume is right there. And even their travel sizes, and this is 15 mil. Look how cute they are. It's it's such a neat concept. I love everything about it because even if you're get even if you're getting a teeny tiny bottle, you still feel like you're getting the full experience. And this is what I really value in niche houses because they're not available everywhere. You cannot try them and you just there's nobody has that kind of budget to try everything in full size bottles just in case you happen to like them. So when niche houses make travel sizes and sample sets give you not only 
the perfume itself and 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 um, opportunity to try it but also give you the full experience with the perfume that is worth a lot to me because this is really rare so you definitely get the full experience here even if you get 15 mil okay 1904 Italian Mandarin Essence there we go Neroli Oris Absolute Florence Heliotrope, Cedar Essence, Sandal, and Musk. Again, often when I just read a, like sort of a laundry list of notes, it's still very hard to pinpoint what the perfume would be like. So I prefer in my videos to give you somewhat a subjective, a personal description of what kind of ambiance, associations, what does it remind me of to give you a bit of a more to give you more of an exposure of what it could be for you if if like if we agree on some of our preferences or completely disagree if I don't like something and you love it then you know within the consistency of my own taste that if I don't like it most likely there's something you must try and vice versa if we have similar tastes then you also can sort of try to assess whether something that I love and the associations that appeal to you could be worth pursuing further so to me 1904 Madame Butterfly is <laughs> like what it makes me think of is this heavy velvet um, curtains you know theater curtains where prima donna like she's rushing off stage she's tired uh, like her makeup was already melting and she's just she has this huge bouquets of flowers that were given to her to admire so she just throws them behind the curtains because she's so in a rush she has to run she's late for something and she forgets that she put those flowers there and the flowers just dry up and Kind of like lose their shape and, and, and it's almost like they're just there for weeks and this is what I smell dried dead flowers all kinds of flowers thrown on a dusty floor behind a thick dusty velvety curtain and if we go back to the notes I think Oris definitely usually gives this kind of like powder dusty smell and Neroli and heliotrope i think maybe with mandarin give more of this kind of like rich floral but kind of like dead flowers you know like dried flower smell to me it's really unique and what i like about it that the volume of the fragrance itself can be tightly managed if you spray it, you just get a whiff a bit of like an echo like a a passing dream of that kind of association if you go ham like six sprays or more then you will have like the full-on experience that will last at least four hours that's I wouldn't say that this is the best perfume I've ever smelled but like I'm really intrigued I will definitely enjoy wearing that next one I think it's the same collection 1980 1890 pardon me 1890 and okay I need the same card to read you the description okay 1890 that is the queen of spades Tchaikovsky huh all right that is one mysterious and dangerous lady huh this one is weird. It's sweet, ambery. Yeah, there's something in there that just, just like just doesn't fit in the pyramid. Okay, let's see. 1890, the Queen of Spades. Oriental leather. Coriander, pepper, orange blossom, rose jasmine. Patchouli, leather, incense, even amber and musk. Huh. Oh, I'm not ready to review this one yet. It's very peculiar to me. Like from reading all these notes, you would expect something like run of the mill, 
kind of light, like night at the fireplace, kind of like heavy, dark scents, but it doesn't feel dark. It doesn't feel like classic leathery scent either. There's something about it that just makes me think of a gem. It's like, it's, it's almost like drinking scotch and snacking on raspberry jam. Yeah. That's, that's, that's probably the closest association I can come up with. Because scotch has a bit of this leathery, woody kind of um, smell. But the sweetness that is in here, even though they say rose, orange blossom, pepper, I don't know. I'm not finding what notes would give me the raspberry jam effect. But that's, that's the closest I can come up with, like the most precise way to describe it. This is something I need to probably work with, wear more, see how it opens up, how it lasts, how it transforms in time. This is the one that I feel you should be also careful with dosage because it seems like it's quite potent. Next. All right, I think this is the same collection again. I have a soft spot for opera. Don't ask. 1831. All right. 1831. Norma. I actually have never, I don't think I've ever heard that one. Norma. Floral aldehyde. Aldehyde, pink pepper, look beautiful green bottle, it's not cute. Um, rose jasmine again, it's just like a battery of floral notes, elang, labdanum, patchouli, resinoid benzoin, vanilla, and musk. You see, such a long pyramid. <laughs> And yet all I smell at least I think it's my third time trying to like get an impression of it As soon as I get those soapy aldehydes, this is it for me for me It is a really good French floral soap None of that resinoid benzoin vanilla mask patchouli mm -mm. No elang, no labdanum just a floral soap. It's good. It's not really my cup of tea, but I'll give it a go. Maybe like in the base, it transforms into something more interesting. These are not the worst aldehydes, but they're definitely the ones that go soapy very quickly. Um, yeah. All right. This is another collection that they had that is all black uh, bottles. And some, like, <laughs> I kind of like tend to say that this is like <laughs> three shades of black afghano by the interpretation of Histoire de So So all of them are supposed to be like this smoky, oody, like heavy, like heavy metal kind of stuff. And the first one that's in my hands right now is Prolix or Prolixe. There are three of them, Irreverent, Reverent, I am apologize, I can't, uh, I'm not really a French speaker. Outresudent, 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 did that? And Prolix, Prolix, say. Okay, what about Prolix? Derived from Prolixus, that which is widely diffused. Smoky, yes. Sweet, yes. But with this kind of like sourness to it. Fruity almost. Let's see. Oh, yes. Oh my god. You're not gonna believe what's in here. Okay. All right. Okay. The opening grapefruit, cassis. I don't know what that is. Pineapple. Pineapple. Then, saffron, cardamom, orange blossom, cedar, sandalwood, patchouli, labdanum, cyst, and leather. How, what's the best way to describe it? If you ever had grilled pineapple, 
This is it. This is like grilled pineapple. This is like smoky, woody, a bit of a burnt feel, plus sweet, juicy, and a bit of a sourness of a pineapple note. And pineapple here doesn't dominate, it mostly wraps up the rest of the notes. You know, like a lot of the fruity uh, fragrances, especially with, with these kind of like sour uh, fruits or exotic fruits, those tend to be very chemical and kind of blasty in your nose. This is not the case. Pineapple here is tastefully wrapped sort of on the background. It doesn't pierce the, the air. It doesn't go first. It's, it's blended with the rest of it. <laughs> this is so bizarre. This is so cool at the same time. Man, I'm looking forward to wearing this. Uh, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, I don't know if I'll love it. But it's it's not a it's not bad smell. It's really alluring. It's just so bizarre. It's like so unusual. Oh my god! Grilled pineapples <laughs> in a bottle. That's crazy. Okay, and the last one um, of the travel sizes, and I have one full bottle that I saved to the end. This one I liked so much that I bought two because <laughs> I couldn't find the full size for like an acceptable price. And this is from the same collection. This is Irreverent. The Irreverent one. Again, all of this was blind purchases, so you will understand quickly enough when you read you when I read you the notes why I caved in for this one. And I love it. I love it. So okay, so the collection is like smoky, woody, woody, you know, right? Okay. Irreverent, uh, derived from Latin irreverence, rejecting conventions, okay. disrespecting norms, outside of established rules, displaying insolence. Opening, bergamot, elemi, lavender, not, a, not the usual suspects, I can tell you that. Then, coffee. Oud and Styrax. And then but for the base, patchouli, sandal, and amber, all the usual suspects there. I swear to God, I don't feel oud in here. I, I, and I even like in, in the, one of the other videos that I featured this perfume in, I claimed like, oh, this is the kind of like perfume. Okay. <clears throat> all right, I'll, I'll pick it up later. Perfume with like for those who can't wear oud but want something like it, but actually does have oud in it. Do I smell coffee? Not as much, but this is the first perfume that in my mind got closer to the smell of coffee beans. My big gripe with all of the coffee scents, or at least fragrances that claim to have coffee note, that it all smell like cheap um, McDonald's or Starbucks coffee. That said, I'm not like against Starbucks coffee, it's just not the best kind of coffee. And there's a lot of add-ons there that have nothing to do with coffee, but we learn by association that to associate those syrupy, uh, creamy, caramel notes with coffee. But the coffee beans themselves don't smell like that. Like black opium, black opium intense, all, like all of those guys. They never really smell like coffee to me. I want to get a perfume that smells like freshly grinded coffee beans. You know, that is what coffee smell is to me. I feel like even though this doesn't quite get there, coffee is definitely not the leading note here, but this is the one that makes a step closer to the smell of coffee beans. By the way, if you know of any fragrance that actually does deliver on that promise, please let me know. I, I'm on a hunt for this. I love it. It's dark, kind of like sweet liquor. It's like one of those neat drinks, you know, that it's just a mix of different bitters, sweet liquors, and I don't know, bourbon maybe. Amazing. I love it. For some reason, it. Do I have it here? No. No, no, I don't. 
Reminds me of Bota Fumero by Carnet Barcelona, but this is even smokier. Oh, ir irreverent is just, it's, it's the best of all of them so far for me. And the last one is what I got in full bottle. And I took that liberty because I actually tried it in the sample first. And for me, Histoire de Parfums is most famous, like, so the central DNA of all of their, most of their perfumes to me is this kind of like elegant, herbal, spicy, kind of soft, spicy DNA. And this kind of like base that they use for a lot of their perfumes. And they wrap a lot of notes with them, be it rose, be it some like darker notes, more green notes, more bitter notes. And I really wanted something with that kind of essence, something that would not be too bitter. Because for example, Histoire de Parfums Matahari is a bit bitter for me. Like it's really grabs you with those it's almost like this kind of like witchcraft going on there with those herbal notes that gives me a little bit of this almost absent like bitterness and I wasn't sure that I could really wear it to the degree of using up the full bottle but this one I found on a great discount and I just caved in this is the most uplifting herbal scent that doesn't go cologne that doesn't go to green that is just free-spirited, well-blended, and it almost makes you want to take a full breath of air. And that is 1828. It's devoted to Jules, Jules Verne, the famous explorer who was born in that year. By the way, all of these numbers are years of when a particular cultural phenomenon happened or a release of a um, music piece happened or where some memorable person was born. So Jules Verne, and yeah, let me show you so you can have like an impression of what, what would happen, what would you get for your money if you bought a full-size bottle. So it comes with a sleeve. I really love this packaging. It's very stylistically on point and yet it feels modern, fresh, with a little bit of this kind of like posh geek side to it. So this is what we get here. There is a description of the perfume and I think descriptions of the notes as well. So you can read more about it, you don't have to guess. And when you pull it out, it kind of like opens like this, some, less, like some kind of like expensive wallet. And here is a full size bottle what it looks like. Let's see. It has a sign, uh, a signature on the, on the lid. Yep. Again, description here on the side and a, basically a serial code at the bottom. How much do you get here? I think this is a hundred mil, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it's uh, actually four fluid ounces, 120. So, Jules Verne, or Nomenclature name 1828. As I told you, this is just fresh herbal scent. It's not as simple as colognes are, and it's not as aromatic as like aftershaves are. And yet it's light uplifting. I would say it's like eau de toilette to me in spirit. It doesn't have enough of the creaminess or heaviness or substantiality to be an auto parfum because it's just, it's like a breeze of fresh air. It's so easy to wear, it's uplifting, it makes you want to take a vacation and go explore, you know, like ride your bike in the field, something like that. I'm loving it. Um, it's not the most seductive or sophisticated or, you know, um, you know, big money kind of perfume, even though they're not cheap. But this is the one that... This is the kind of like, the kind of thing that makes you think how much does freedom cost? And that's probably the most precious commodity. This is probably the most expensive thing you are in our lives. How often, how many people can afford just to take four weeks off and disappear, rent a cottage in, you know, in like in the middle of nowhere 
enjoy a good book, nine hours sleep, and boredom to that matter. We cannot afford boredom anymore. We cannot afford vacations. We cannot afford exploration. Everything we do is so packed and so curated and so planned and so many things are shoved in in there. And I feel like this is the kind of expensive, expensive perfume that reminds us that freedom is the most precious and hard to get things in life. Freedom to explore, freedom to breathe, freedom to not constantly check our phones on like check if you're on, on track with your day. So in a way it's almost ironic that it's so expensive to be so free-spirited, but in a way it's so true that free-spiritedness and almost like being flippant and reckless in a good way, in a childish way, does cost probably more than any curated luxury. So yeah, this is why this has a special place in my heart. That's because it gives me a lot of inspiration and thoughts. Anyway, this is all that I wanted to show you today. Let me know what you think of this, uh, of this brand. Have you heard of Historia Parfums? Have you tried them? How do you think they compare with other niche brands? I'll be waiting for your comments. Uh, let me know what you think about these perfumes or any others that you tried. What do you think they, they smell similar to? I'm firmly in love with this brand. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be buying a lot of these perfumes in the near future because I just got myself like a whole library, <laughs> pun intended. Um, but at the same time, I wish. I wish they had a PR list and I wish I was on it. That's all I can say. All right, kisses. I'll see you in the next video. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.